Jenny Sparks, issue two, Tom King writing and Jeff Spokes on the R. So, uh, the first issue was very tightly done and how it kind of built up to this hostage situation in the in the pub. And this issue, of course, continues that story as its main plot, but the start of the issue sets up a sort of B plot, which is taking place in 2001. And this is a, a bit weird for me, because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, 9-11 is like, the first thing we see is 9-11, right? We see yes. a, a page showing that, and there's references throughout, and whenever we have one of these flashbacks to Bush being president, and like what was going on in the world at the time, but we also have like, you know, in the present day story, Superman talking to uh, Jenny Sparks, and I'm like, it feels really weird to me to just like, have all that just just accurately have happened in the DC universe. Yeah. I don't know. It feels weird. <laughs> I like I like that the DC universe exists in its own. And like, yes, they can use real world events for certain things, but they're not Marvel that way, right? Where Marvel's very much set in the real world, right? And that the Marvel version of New York is it's kind of its own thing, but it's still New York. Whereas you know, DC has Metropolis and Gotham and it's Central and Keystone cities, so you you can separate a bit. So when you bring in real world events to it. It feels weird. I mean, I suppose it comes down to like a time thing because none of us bat an eye when they say that, oh, the JSA were involved in World War Two or something yeah. like that. Like, we don't even think about it. It's like, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah, of course World War Two happened. Yeah. But even though it's been 20 plus years since 9 11, it still, because it, maybe it's because it just happened in our lifetimes, it just feels yeah. weird to me to have it just be brought up like it happened. Uh, mm hmm. I, I I guess I guess part of the problem with it is is that it raises this weird question of like well in the DC version of nine eleven did Superman just fly and save everyone that was like at the top of the tower because why wouldn't he yeah right you know it, that's a really weird question that just is murky and you don't really want to ask it right and that's what I mean by it feeling weird right and that's yeah. why there's there's a bit of of a separation between the Earth of the DCU and and real world you know. Because of because of, this is a world with, with superheroes. I mean, know? unless so. we're suggesting that Jenny was in like our world and then somehow went to the DCU later <laughs> on, which is possible. There, there are things that play here that might suggest that, just because she is the spirit of the 20th century, and now she's around in like 2024. Yeah, right. That's, that's... So maybe there was some shifting of things, and yeah. Well, um, I mean, well, the next part, the next bit, of the flashback uh, mm -hmm. does kind of. Exp well, not explain why necessarily, yeah. but it, it makes it clear that she is dead. It makes it also clear that she is the great granddaughter of uh, Darwin, which yeah. is okay, fair enough. Uh, but then she wakes up in her coffin and she resurrects. She snaps her fingers to teleport out uh, via Spark, as she does. And we hear her complain that they buried her in this really like, pretty princess dress, which is totally mm -hmm. not her. And this guy that she's talking to mentions, oh, that fire at the cathedral, do you think this is like what happened in New York? And she's like, what happened in New York? So mm -hmm. it's this idea that she died in 1999 uh, at the end of the century, right? Because she's a century baby. Mm -hmm. But then she came back after 9-11 and is finding out that the world's gone to shit uh, mm -hmm. right after she left, pretty much. Uh, so, yeah, we come back to that flashback timeline a couple times uh, throughout the issue. Now, is that fire caused by her? Is that what we're supposed to? Her getting out of her coffin? Because that's the abbey where she was buried. Yeah. Um, I, okay. I, I think that's the implication. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was following that. Uh, and if it isn't, if they do say later on that, okay, yeah. someone actually did do a terrorist act here, then mm -hmm. fair enough. But I... Gotcha. Uh, I don't suspect that she would have wanted to do that, like, intentionally. No, I just think maybe it happened yeah. by accident, right? Like, she... She did her whole, you know, get out with electricity, but because of that, you know, it burned the coffin, which then started the fire. Yeah. So you when know. we go back to the present day stuff, it does start a little bit before the end of last issue in the mm -hmm. sense that Superman talks to her and says, hey, do the hostage negotiation stuff, keep him calm. We're basically waiting for Wally to get back from another uh, world because we need speed to try and get in and out as quickly as possible to avoid him having any more casualties. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason why I say that is because the end of last issue was her walking up to the like the negotiations. So yep. this is set a little bit before that. Uh, she also mentions uh, here that she kissed Clark in college, which actually yeah. I guess that proves she was in the DC universe before nine eleven because that had been before well, that. When, 
when yeah when Clark was in college. So we have to go off of whenever that was too. Because she also, you know, she goes, you know, while you know, a snog while he was on the rebound from a mermaid, right? So that's playing with the the Lori Lamaris type stuff. So again, it just it's overthinking. Oh uh, yeah, stuff. maybe we're just overthinking it. It's not that that's, important, but it, it's not that important. But it, it feels like yeah, she was definitely around when Clark was in college, whenever that was. I'm assuming that's before she died, though. But but, but that would mean mm-hmm. that Clark's been out of college for over twenty four years. So mm-hmm. well, then again, actually, that's not true though, because the entirety of like uh, the New Fifty Two, for example, took place over mm-hmm. one year. So, and that was five years of real time. So. Who, who, knows, Lord. Who, who knows how time is working yeah. here? Hyper time. As yeah. I always just chalk things up to hyper time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's the weird thing then, though. If you're doing flashbacks to just after 9 11 and then you're saying this is present day, has it right. been 24 years in the DCU since then? I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> right. I know. And that's where throwing something like that for just a joke, you're kind of like, okay, well, now I'm thinking about, you know, young Clark Kent and Jenny Sparks and. When when exactly did this happen? Is this pre nine eleven, post nine eleven? What are we doing? Now, now don't get me wrong. Uh, like I, I get that King is put nine eleven in here because mm-hmm. he's he's going to use it in a serious way. He's going to use mm-hmm. it and show how it affects Jenny that the world's going to mm-hmm. shit and how that that weighs on her. And I'm sure there's going to be some more thematic points to it as the book goes on. And I suspect that the reason why he has to use nine eleven because as much as he could make, come up with a DC universe like thing that happened mm-hmm. that she could be feeling something for. It's never going to hit as hard as the real thing that actually just happened in the context of this. Well, yeah, and from my understanding of the authority and Jenny Sparks and and all that with Warren Ellis and Stormwatch, the authority, uh, kind of the whole Wildstorm universe, that it was meant to be kind of a real world response, right? So that's why Apollo and Midnighter are, are are kind of a real world version of Batman and Superman, you know. So it was very much supposed to be echoing yeah. closer to a real world. So then, you know, so, here... So it also fits into where Jenny Sparks comes from, is to use real-world right. events rather than just fake, you know. Because it could have very exactly. easily have been, oh, a crisis happened after mm-hmm. she died, and that's what she's right. reacting to. But well, no, and then it's, we it's, have... it's, it's the real thing that we actually live through. Exactly. And then it's just like, that's kind of what, in, in the pages of The Outsiders, right, that's what Jenny Crisis represents, is that is that new century baby in, you know that has lived through these different crises, not just in DC, but for what that means in the real world as well, which, and then when we'll talk about planetary, I'm sure this all plays into kind of all of that. Um, so I think King's doing a good job at kind of stratifying things a bit. Well, not, it doesn't get in the way of this story in the bar, like at all. No, no. Right? I mean, once, once that kicks off, it, it the the book really starts to cook. Yeah, the, the hostage situation is just interesting on its own without all this mm-hmm. extra stuff that we're talking about mm-hmm. now. Because once we get in there, the the hostages know they're hostages and they're terrified mm-hmm. of uh, mm-hmm. of Captain Atom. And mm-hmm. there's the one guy who I think was like the sleazy kind of producer dude who says, yes. "I'm I'm going for a drink," and he goes up to the bar when it's just Captain Atom sitting there talking to the barman, yeah. and. He just zaps him and he like disappears and disintegrates and the rest mm-hmm. of them all just freak out because basically they were debating before surely he won't kill us he's still a superhero right like you don't just mm-hmm. lose that um but then sure enough like he disintegrates this guy in front of them and yeah, they all he, just get shocked yeah he dark manhattans him right yeah pretty just much like, yeah you know um and one of the things here about the uh the the art is that you know all of these panels have detailed backgrounds of the bar set mm-hmm. around them but when he does this and we get the reaction panel of the mm-hmm. characters, the background goes away and it's just bright orange. It's like, you know, yeah. the, it's, it's that classic sort of technique of just having uh, everything fade away to sort of mm-hmm. show that they're just in the moment like that. I, I Yeah, I, I like that. Uh, just to clarify one thing, last issue we were trying to sort of identify who all these characters were. Yeah. Uh, there was the two ladies who I thought were maybe sisters. It does make it. Someone did say there was a hint in issue one that there were a mm-hmm. couple, that, that, as yeah. as in one of them's married, but they're having an affair with this woman. Yeah. Uh, here, this kind of made it more uh, clear. Know, clear, yeah, like because there's a whole moment where they're holding hands, and mm-hmm. one mentions the husband, and she's like, "Oh, you have to bring up, you know, you know, again, even now you're mentioning him." So, yeah, uh, I thought that was a really good pa- a couple of pages to just sort of establish just how terrifying again uh, Captain Atom is and how these regular people are actually shit scared of him because he mm-hmm. can just snap his fingers and off they go uh, very good 
Then it gets back to a flashback where Jenny Sparks is hanging out um, in the debris of 9-11, I think is mm -hmm. what they were going for here. Like the firefighters are yep. uh, just talking about what they were going to be doing uh, this weekend or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now they're not because they're here. And she's just kind of like trespassing and they, they notice her and say like, hey, you're not meant to be here. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Uh, like, get out. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's restricted. Um, so then you have uh, her negotiations. We're back in the present day stuff. And there's a running thing here where she doesn't have a phone. She keeps having to ask the time uh, from people. And they're just not uh, like, like, what, you don't have a watch? No. Do you not have a phone? No. Uh, and she has to go and borrow a phone from a guy at a store to uh, like do use her powers to get into the bar because she zaps her way in. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, once we go, we go back into the bar though, and like the uh, the therapist character who's sick, right? We found out he was dying last issue. He starts coughing up a storm as he's trying to like berate Captain Atom for killing the guy, and he's he's like, "Hey, like you 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 didn't deserve that. That that that's not right." And he's like, you're judging me? And it gets kind of tense. Mm -hmm. uh, and we get the, the, the panels of, of Jenny in the store using this guy's phone to zap herself into the bar. Uh, and what she does by having, like, she actually phones the bar. And when the bartender picks up the phone, uh, she zaps out of the phone. So I, I guess we're yeah. getting a better understanding of how her powers kind of work. Yeah. Uh, but there is this kind of teleportation aspect to it uh that, that's happening well it's almost like she's writing electricity lines right yes like she's writing it through the phone the the one her getting out of the the coffin was a little bit weird but it's almost like maybe she exploded herself out i'm not not too sure this one made more sense that's why she needed the phone she was traveling the airwaves through electricity because now it's kind of ambient everywhere which i wonder how she did stuff back in the beginning of the 1900s right where electricity wasn't as available well, it was the thing. It just was, yeah. You know, obviously, it got more widespread as time went on. Yeah. But by the time she was like in her twenties, it would have started mm -hmm. to be really common. So I think that's she probably, true too. Uh, she yeah. probably. I I just wonder, uh, is it specifically like phone lines, or is it any electrical mm -hmm. current she can travel yeah. through? I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. uh, interesting all the same. But she, yeah, she gets her way into the bars. This great full page spread as she's standing there across, looking at Captain Atom, and he's like, "Wait, aren't you dead? Didn't I kill you?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> and She's like, didn't you have five hostages? And he's like, uh, sorry, no. Uh, and then the, the others like shout out that he killed the other guy. Yeah. Uh, so. It, it's the way that he goes, I do. No, I did. So I don't, not anymore. Uh, that that was a, a real good dark laugh. Yeah. And it's worth mentioning, like, so much of the, 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 the pages in here are either, like, these horizontal panels, like at the last issue, mm -hmm. or nine panel grids, but everything's very straight and grid-like. But notably, mm -hmm. there's these key moments where it'll go, you know, more kind of like an angle or, or something. Yeah. And it's usually because powers are being used and it's the idea that realities, you know, the rules of the panels start to break because the mm -hmm. powers are being used. And that means that the rules of reality is not being adhered to. Mm -hmm. So it's a really simple thing that really works well. Uh, Captain Atom like fires a blast at her, which like fires right outside the building is into space, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. and she's like oh shit and it like actually goes through her she's got like a like steam coming out of her like midriff mm -hmm. uh, so it becomes this debate though because he wants to be a god right that was his whole mm -hmm. thing he wants people to admit that he's god and she's arguing against him and she's saying hey you killed a guy you, you know like all this religious bullshit like who cares um, you know and basically Captain Atom takes the old guy the therapist who's dying of cancer he puts his hand on his shoulder and he cures him and says, he'll now live for a long time. The cancer is gone. There, I just did a miracle. There it is. Uh, and then not only that, he then makes the guy he killed earlier reappear. Puff of smoke. Mm -hmm. And there he is. And the guy is just confused. Uh, and like, wait, what happened? And he's like, wait, who's this? Who are you, Jenny? Like, he doesn't say that, obviously, because he doesn't know her name. But yeah. Uh, and it's just like a comedy beat almost where he's just kind of confused and still wants a drink and he's just kind of like what, wait, what just happened? And Captain Atom just leans over and goes it was a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he also sends Jenny away, right? Because she ends up turning into the puff of smoke. Yeah, yeah. He, he yeah, does, yeah. He, he does right look, before. Um, I'm trying to see. Is it before he yeah. brings him back? 
No, no, no it's, it's after, right after. It's after yeah, he brings yeah. it back. I was just looking at the page again. I wasn't confused about that. He does send no. her away. I was just yeah, looking yeah. to confirm uh, how he does it. But it definitely mm-hmm. implies because he says, he says, mm-hmm. I said no, and then she disappears, which definitely mm-hmm. implies that he did it to her. I was just double checking to see if it yeah. was something she did or something that he did. That's... That's what I was trying to figure out too. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to find that page. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, and then 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 it's uh, yeah, the guy the guy just came back to life is confused and is like, yeah, I guess I'll have a drink. And it seems like Captain Atom's going to play nice with them now. Maybe he's realised that playing mm-hmm. nice with them and giving them miracles is how they'll recognise him as a god rather than being full yeah. test, you know, Old Testament like vengeful god. Uh, but yeah, uh, and then the final page is actually back in the flashbacks where it's uh, Jenny Sparks listening mm-hmm. to the radio talking about Bush and how. You know, it seemed like the world was starting to stabilize after the fall of the Soviet Union, but now after 9-11, it feels like, you know, all bets are off. Like, where where are we going now? And she starts mm-hmm. crying. And I think that was an interesting moment to end on because she's such, like, a tough, like, wisecracking character who mm-hmm. sh- never shows any emotion that having her just break down in tears at the state of the world actually kind of hit hard. And maybe that's why you, you use 9-11, because it's a real yeah. thing. And having her break down, like, all the superhero shit doesn't phase her. She's just bored by them. She's annoyed by them. It mm-hmm. doesn't phase her at all. But as soon as, like, this real subject comes up, she does get affected. She breaks down in tears, and she can't handle it. And maybe that's why you use the real event. On top of just, yeah. you know, it coming from the stories that do typically use real events, maybe that's the, the narrative reason for it. I, I, I think it works... I'm curious to see what he does with it, though. Like, right now, I don't know what he's going to do with all these flashbacks and why we're doing them. Uh, It's just a case of, like, putting her in that time and place, her discovering what the world's like after she came back to life, and, you know, we'll we'll see where the story takes it as it goes on. Um, But I'm curious. Like, I was wondering at the start of this issue, is this hostage situation going to be the entire Mm -hmm. book? You know, are we going to are we going to be coming in and out of this bar for the entire seven issues? Because it feels like it might be now. I feel like we are. I yeah. feel it's it's one of those. It's a moment in time, I don't think. And here at the end, where she's listening to the radio, and uh, the the second to last panel, it says, "I guess the only thing that's really clear here is that the end of history is not here. No, sir, we're still going strong, strong as ever." And that's where she's you know breaking down, right? And it's almost I feel like that's her being like she earned her rest. Right, but because mm. of machinations out of her control, she's she's back around. Yeah, and it's you know because she's that spirit of the 20th century, and that we're just in an extended part of that now. We're not being able to turn to the next thing. Not, and it's almost like she's exhausted. We've not moved you know? on, and that's why yeah. she's not allowed to rest. Yeah, yep. um, yeah, yeah. She's sort of already starting to cry even before it says that. Mm-hmm. Like you know, just just talking about what's already came and she starts to cry it's, it's almost like mm-hmm. you know her entire life like she had she got to see the the rise and fall of the soviet union yep. and mm-hmm. like all that tensions and whatever and it was like that's finally over it's, i'm finally done yeah. and here we are all this shit's kicking it's, off yeah it's definitely that meme of i'm, I'm tired of, of living through unprecedented events i'd like to live through a precedented event uh and so that's that's what her entire it seems like here is she's like all right wh- why why now what's going on um, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm curious to see how that fits in with the story. Cause this is in the past, right? So it's like, does she develop that callus in, in the 20 plus years to, to where we meet her? Right. Like, no, cause know. she had that when she woke up, like when she was talking yeah. to that guy, when she woke up, she's still that's sitting true, like true. her. Yeah. I, I think that's just always who she was, but yeah, I, I think, but I think that's what makes it more important here that she does break down like this at the end is, mm-hmm. is that it feels like. It must be really getting to her if she's showing this level of yeah. of vulnerability. Uh, so yeah, the book loves the wide panels. Like there's so many mm-hmm. of the pages of those wide panels where it's just you know you get five to six panels just going horizontally across the way. Uh, there's the occasional nine panel grid and whatnot, but that's a lot of the panels, yeah. and it it does give this this sense of sequential storytelling because you'll get just the characters moving around in mm-hmm. that space. Uh, the first issue did that really well. This one kind of continues that trend. Um, so no, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see uh more of the themes come together as we get more issues. But I do think this was a really solid second issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is intriguing me with what it's talking about and where it's going. Uh, the idea that you've got her struggling with still being alive, where she can't rest because she has to help people, but then you've got this other character who wants to be seen as God. Uh, 
when she's like mm-hmm. she's like, she's got the burden of a god, but he just wants yeah. the glory of being a god, and it's right? it's, it's interesting. So I'm very fascinated. If I, I mean, if I'm to compare it to issue one, I do think issue one was such a strong like build to an ending yeah. that issue two almost could never have been quite as excellent as it, but mm-hmm. it's still pretty excellent. Like I still yeah. really like this by and large. Very captivating. So. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, what are you rating Jenny Sparks? Um, I'm going to give it an 8. Uh, 8.5 for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's nigh on the 9, but it just, um, I'm, just not, I'm just not quite feeling a 9 this week, I guess. So. 